Hi, this is a second video in, in a look at uh, the materials uh, creation and, and analyzing in uh, Rhino inside Revit. And so today we're going to look really closely at uh, appearance assets or the render properties of, of materials uh, in Revit as you can drive them from Grasshopper. So let's look at this definition kind of in, in the overall. Uh, over here on the left I have uh, some some raw materials, some bitmaps, and and some folders of bitmaps, and so I'm going to to work with those, and I'm going to create in the second area here. I'm going to create a bitmap asset, and then and then appearance asset uh, for placing inside a material, inside a Revit material. That's what we do in this little group here, is we create the material itself, and assign the appearance asset to that material. And then what we do over here is I'm just going to pull those those that material apart into its component pieces. So we're going to analyze what we created, and uh, so these are generally the the flow um, that you can use. Um, right in here in the middle, once you create the material with the appearance asset, that that this is where you would uh, assign it to objects and things like that. And uh, so let me look down over here, and we'll start here. So I have a series of, I have two folders. I have a low res, low resolution version of the folder and I have a high resolution version of the folder. So I have same images in both except the high resolution version versus the low resolution version. Uh, and and here's the, the bitmaps I have in there. I created a, a little text file here that has uh, the, the name of the bitmap and then the height and the width of each one. And so I break those out into strings uh, the, the bitmap, the height, and the width, and then we're going to use those to create some materials. Uh, and, and so this is the, the main piece here of creating the appearance asset or the rendered, the rendered properties of, the, of what's inside the material. And, and w the, where we do that is up here in this new toolbar. This is where we're going to have all these, all these uh, material and, uh, and appearance asset components. Um, and so we have these bitmaps coming in here, and a bitmap needs to be wrapped up into a bitmap asset, which has things like height and width and the image itself, uh, whether it repeats, all those kinds of things. So I've created that here. If you look over in here, that's construct bitmap asset. So each one of those bitmaps, uh, we create an asset. And then um, a bitmap asset needs to be placed in an appearance asset. And so I do that by going to create appearance asset. And we use the, we're doing a generic material here. And so we create it, we use the name, we create the bitmap asset will get placed in image and it can be placed in the cutout uh, section. That's where you have a, a, an image with a PNG in the background so it can have the rest of it to be transparent. And then where the color is, it would be solid. Uh, we can do things like turn on and off metallic highlights, uh, change the tint color, things like that. And you can see what it creates off the backside is a bunch of Rev Revit appearance assets uh, with a name. Now, it's important to understand that appearance assets by themselves are pretty useless. Uh, they need to be placed inside a material. And so that's what we do up here. And uh, we go in here and we can create a material, which is this component right here. And it just takes a name, so I take a mat dash, add it to the front of the bitmap name, and I get a series of materials, mat dash brick, mat dash stone, mat dash wood, and so that's our materials. And then what I can do by uh, creating um, replace materials asset is I can take my material and then I can assign the appearance assets I had created. I can assign one to each material. And so I do that here. And what I come out with is a material that's named properly and also has the correct appearance assets, the correct uh, materi uh, render material, if you, were, uh, if you will. And, uh, and then I would use that, at this point, I could use that in creating uh, uh, forms and families or creating direct shapes or wherever I can apply a material uh, to an object, this is that's the material I would use to do that. Fairly straightforward. 
uh, and then let's look on the on the on the other side of this so so what we can do is we can also pull those apart and again uh, in this case I'm going to extract the materials assets so now I have my material I extract its material asset I can analyze that material asset uh, and uh, analyze appearance asset here and that allow gives me the uh, name uh, I can get the color I can get the image out of there again it's a bitmap asset uh, so I can uh, then break uh, come down here to uh, deconstruct bitmap asset and so then I can get to its width and I can get to the source image that was used in that material so you can see that's right here these are all the low res ones and so just to show um, kind of how fast we can recreate or change materials I'm just going to jump all the way over into this oh, all the way back over here and I'm going to uh, double click this and this will shift me from the low res folder to the high res folder it'll recreate everything so we'll double click here thanks for a second and then uh, you know it created a new appearance asset assigned it to the materials on and on and on and if we come off the back side here you can see that the source images now use the high-res brick materials brick five or but the high-res versions and so um, that's generally how you can put um, material uh, render materials together you have appearance assets that need to be assigned to the larger container of a material those can be assigned to objects or if you want to analyze a material you can also pull a material apart and decide what it has in it obviously replace the properties that you want all using grasshopper uh, and rhino inside Revit thanks <laughs>